Alrighty, let's take a closer look at C++ classes. Uh, this is an example taken from uh, the Weiss PDF that we've included in the uh, Blackboard um, and as well as in Teams. Um, this comes from Chapter 1 from Weiss. Uh, Weiss's textbook is called Data Structures and Algorithm Analysis in C++. It's a fairly advanced textbook, but Chapter 1 does give us a great background and uh, look into some specific C++ details that will help us quite a bit as we go forward in this course. So anyways, this class, uh, uh, this, this file, figure 1-5.h, uh, comes from figure 1-5 and it basically shows us the um, complete declaration of a class. Alright, some of the basic syntax uh, and details behind declaring a class and in fact defining a class in this case so what we have here is a header file which is completely defining a class for us so in other words what I like to say is that the definition is in line with the class declaration so if we look here uh, on line 5 uh, as we've seen before with the sphere class we have the beginning of a, a class declaration and in this case, we have a class called int cell. This is meant to model a memory cell which would store integer values. Now, in this case, um, different from the sphere class that we saw before, um, the arrangement of the sections in this class are different. Uh, this author likes to declare the public interface to a class first, which we see following the keyword public. And then after that, providing the private encapsulated details afterwards. And I kind of favor that presentation as well within a class declaration. You know, right up front you see what is part of the public interface for, this, for the class and then all the hidden details come uh, subsequent to that. Okay, so anyways, what we have here is what we, you know, very something, something very similar to what we've seen before. But before we look at that, let's take a look at the private section so we know the innards of this class. The private section here simply declare, declares a, a single attribute called stored value, which is meant to store an integer value. This is the value stored by this quote unquote integer memory cell. So now when we look at the default constructor, again, this is a special method whose name is exactly the same as the class that it's defined in. And here what we see is that we're initializing stored value to the number zero. So if we just declare an instance of int cell, its value is going to be zero. On the other hand, we also have an initializing constructor, and this provides us with the means of initializing that int cell with some particular initial value. And so here we see that we're simply passing along the initial value in as a parameter, and we're using that initial value to assign it to the internal attribute called stored value. Then we have an accessor method we're going to access the stored value in a read operation and of course since this is storing an integer value this would re return an integer result. Similarly we have a, a mutator um, operation called write in which we would write the value of some x into the stored uh, cell, the stored value. Uh, there's no return type here, it's void, we're simply mutating the stored value. Now again, what we have here is a complete inline definition of this class. So all the methods have their implementation details provided straight up in the header file. And that's not uncommon. Uh, we won't do that, but it's here for us to see that it's not, you know, it's something we can do and it's not necessarily uncommon. Now before when we looked at the sphere class and I talked about the default constructor and the initializing constructor and how we could sort of consolidate those different uh, definitions, I want to look at that next. Okay, so if we take a look at figure 1-6.h, we do this. We improve upon this definition in a number of different ways. Firstly, let's look at the constructor. We notice that we have a single constructor defined here, int cell. And it appears to be an initializing constructor because we have that parameter. But at the same time, we see that we're providing a default value for that parameter. So in other words, if it's missing, then initial value is assumed to get be assigned the number zero. 
Second thing to notice here is that we're making use of an initialization list. And here what we're doing is we're going to initialize the private data member stored value to whatever was passed in. And again, if nothing was passed in, initial value is assigned zero, and that's what's being stored in stored value. If we do provide an argument to this constructor, well then that argument's value is in fact assigned to initial value, which is subsequently st stored in stored value. Another thing to notice here is that we're using in our initializer list what we call um, standard initialization. So we're using these curly brackets to initialize the value of stored value. Now one last thing to notice about this constructor is the use of the keyword explicit. Now the textbook, uh, the Weiss textbook goes into great detail as to what this means here, but fundamentally if we ever have the possibility of having a constructor with a single argument we really should declare this as explicit. Because underneath the hood, with a single argument, the C++ um, system can do what we call implicit initializations. And we want to be explicit about everything we're doing here and make sure that there's no possible way that we inadvertently initialize an int cell with some other type that isn't anything like an int cell. So we use the keyword explicit. And like I say, we do this whenever there's the possibility of having a single parameter. Now this means if we have multiple parameters in our, in our parameter list, and each of them have a default value, there still exists the possibility that we have a single parameter constructor. And therefore, again, we would require to use, or not require, but suggest that we use the explicit keyword on the constructor. Second uh, improvement that we have here is, as I mentioned before, the read operation really is an accessor method. It's accessing the value of stored value. And as such, we should declare that as a const method. And that's all the improvements that we've made to one fi figure 1-5. One this is a much better implementation, if you will, uh, or, or definition, if you will, of the int cell if I were to define this in line in the header file as we do here. We'll take a look at splitting this up now into a separate interface and implementation files in another video.